In this lesson, we'll take a look at the physical sky feature of Cinema 4D. Okay, so the physical sky is a feature inside of Cinema 4D that really combines a lot of the features that we've looked at up to this point. The features of having sort of a sky environment, a sunlight, um, the ability to set up a time, a day, a location. Uh, these are all things that we've looked at up to this point, but they've never all been bundled up into one single node. So inside of Cinema 4D, we can go up to Create, Physical Sky, and drop in the Physical Sky. Now, I believe that this feature is only available for Cinema 4D Visualize and Cinema 4D Studio. If you're using Cinema 4D Prime or Cinema 4D Broadcast, I don't believe you have access to this particular feature. So, we drop in the Physical Sky, and if we take a look inside the controls here, we have controls for time and location, we have sky controls, and we have sun controls. So let's start with the date and time. So here we can put in the uh, month, we can put in a specific day if we choose, we can come over here to our clock and just simply click and drag to change the time of day. And we could also come in here and choose a particular city or location. So if we come in, and just take a quick render of this. You can see the result that we get. So sort of an evening time shot. You'll notice that this sunlight automatically calculates shadows. So this is uh, one of the few types of lights that we don't have to come in and manually enable shadows on. It's going to do that for us automatically. Um, one of the things that we also have is the ability to come in here and very quickly load up some presets, which is really, really nice. So we can come in here choose a preset for our sky. Maybe we want something a little bit more orange. That'll come in here and basically set everything for us. In my case, that's not really looking quite the way I want, so let's try another one. And there we go. So lots of different uh, types of skies to choose from. Let's maybe try something a little bit more natural. And there we go. So sort of a nice sky. Let's come back to our day and time. You can see right now it's set pretty early in the morning. So let's maybe crank that up to a little bit later in the afternoon. There we go. Move that sun over just a little bit further. Okay. So we do have this uh, sort of surrounding illumination and this direct illumination source, which is our sun. But right now it doesn't look all that realistic. So what we can do is go into our render settings start to introduce some global illumination, which we looked at in our previous lesson. So let's go up to Effect, add in some global illumination, and give this just a moment to recalculate. And now it should factor in the sun, the sky, and all of the surrounding illumination for us. If we come in and press Shift-R, we should be able to come in and take a quick render of this. Okay, very nice. So you can see uh, with just one simple uh, object in here, the physical sky, it's taking care of all of this for us. Now if we want to, we can still come in and make some minor alterations to this. So if we want to go back to our sky, let's take a look at something like the sun. So if we find that maybe our sunlight is maybe not quite strong enough, or we, we want that to be a little bit stronger, we should be able to come in here and just go to our sun intensity, we could start to bring that up to maybe 150, maybe 200 percent. You could really take this up uh, to some very, very high values if you decide maybe you just want your uh, light to be maybe just a little bit brighter. If you find that maybe your sunlight is a little bit too orange or you want to change the color of that, right now we have our preview color. We really can't change that, but what we can do is come down to the custom color for this sun, enable that, and now we can just simply use our color slider and maybe choose a sun color that is a little bit less yellow and a little less warm, and then we can start to get something, something like that. Now in my case, now that I've changed that sun color, things do seem a little bit too bright, so I may need to bring that intensity back down just a little bit more to make that a little bit more manageable. So to finish this off, what I could maybe do is start to bring a little bit more detail into some of these shadows and just maybe use some ambient occlusion for that. So if I hit Control-B on my keyboard to bring up my render settings once again, 
Just go to Effect. Let's add in some ambient occlusion. In my case, I'll go ahead and just probably leave those at their default settings. That just starts to help bring some of these indirect shadows sort of back uh, into this. And what I might try to do is go back to my global illumination and see what happens if I set my diffuse depth to 2 and maybe get some stronger light bouncing in here. Maybe not something that's quite so dark. In my case, it's a fairly subtle difference, so it's really sort of up to you if you uh, want to do that or not. But let's come in here and now take a, another quick render inside of our picture viewer. Again, I'm using the keyboard shortcut Shift R. Okay, very nice. So you can see how uh, with just one simple physical sky in our scene, we're able to get some really, really nice, very realistic outdoor illumination with very little effort. So that's a look at this physical sky feature in Cinema 4D.